Quick recap from last time, we discovered that if we can find this M inverse matrix, then we can transform the path of the bullet into the local coordinates of our box, and so we can do a trace against an axis aligned box. And so we need to find the inverse scaling, rotation, and translation matrices in order to do that. And right before we get into that, I want to point out real quick that when we had M, it was, it was a product of T, R, and S. But now we have M inverse, and it's a product of S, R, and T inverse, inverses, all inverses. And so I just want to point this out because like I've said a few times, order matters. And <clears throat> we have reversed the order when we're trying to get the inverse matrix matrices. So that's important. I'm going <clears> to <throat> get rid of this and we're going to embark on our mission to find all these inverse matrices. Let's start out with scaling inverse. So if you remember, we made a matrix and here's a quick link to uh, the previous video. Let's say we had a matrix that had A, like this, B, and C, like this. And we got this because we had, we had A times X hat as the first column, B times Y hat as the second column, and C times Z hat as the third column. This will make a scaling matrix that scales you A in the X direction, B in the Y direction, and C in the Z direction. So that's S. S equals this. And we want to find the inverse. We want to find the inverse, right? So we're going to invert this matrix. What do you do? If you have, if you have something like A times X hat, and that gives you a new, uh, a new uh, X, X prime, and you have X prime and you want to do the opposite situation, you want to get back to X hat, well, let's see, I'm going to say 1 over A, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over A, and then these two cancel out to make just 1, and so you get X hat equals 1 over A times X prime, right? So the solution, it seems, to making this inverse scaling matrix is that we have to take the inverse of our A, B, and C. So what we're going to get is 1 over A, 0, 0. I just took the inverse of A, and I got 1 over A. And then 1 over B, I took the inverse of B. And then 0, 0, 1 over C. We take the inverses of all our column vectors, and that will give us the inverse scaling matrix. Another way to think of this is that if you make if you scale something by making it twice as long, okay, then if you want to get back to your original size, you have to make it half as long. So that's that's scaling inverse. Now let's look at our next job which is rotation. Rotation. Rotation inverse. If you remember, quick recap, we had our vectors that looked like this. Oh, I, sh I should throw up a link to the video where we did this. Here it is so that you can review. We have our two basis vectors and we rotated them theta degrees. So now we're just going to do the opposite. We have two, uh, two basis vectors again, but we're going to rotate them theta degrees in the opposite direction. So instead of going counterclockwise, now we're going to go we're going to go clockwise. The same amount. This is that same theta and this is that same theta. So whereas before we had a matrix that looked something like this, we had a let's see it was cosine theta, negative sine theta here, positive sine theta here and then cosine theta here. Okay, and we want to find the inverse of that. Well, let's see what it's going to be. So, it looks like for our, for our x vector, cosine is going to stay the same. The x component is going to stay the same, cosine of theta.
but then the y component you see it was positive now it's negative so negative sine theta for the y basis vector the x component is opposite of what it was. It was over here, and now it's over there. So it was negative sign, now it's positive sign. Okay, but the the y component vector stays the same. It was positive. It's still positive. It's the same length. So we just put a cosine theta right there. And we notice something kind of interesting. Uh, these two guys have stayed the same. These cosines have stayed the same, but this, the negative sign and positive sign have switched position. That's because rotation matrices are special. Rotation matrices are special in that their inverse is the same thing as their... I didn't draw it right. They're transposed. And what does transpose mean? So transpose means you take every column in the original matrix, every column, and you make it into a row in the next matrix. You see we have this column right here and yoink, we've made it into a row. So cosine, sine, cosine, sine. And the next column, negative sine, cosine, has been turned into the bottom row, negative sine, cosine. So that means it's super easy to take the inverse of rotation matrices. The, we only have one thing left to do and that is to make, what color shall I use? This one. Translation matrices. Translation inverse. Translation is the easiest of the three. Let's say you have this point A. Okay, and you use this translation vector V to get to point B. Well, how do you get back the other way? You just take negative v the same vector but negative so when i had my matrix like this and i had my x y z basis vectors they were all right here okay and then i had my translation column at the end if i want to make this into a translation inverse matrix then i just say negative v x negative v y negative v z and that should do it now i have an inverse scaling an inverse rotation and an inverse translation matrix i can put them all together and get m inverse and i can do finally do this intersection algorithm that we've been trying to do the whole time so let's go to the code and make it work okay now i've made myself a little set transform function here where I've passed in the scaling, the rotation theta, and you can't see it, but the translation is right here off the screen. And we make a transform matrix out of here, just like we did a few videos ago. And now we're tasked with making a transform inverse matrix too. So let's make, we gotta, we gotta do this one at a time and put it all together, the scaling inverse matrix uh, let's see that is one over the scaling if you remember from our video we have to take the algebraic inverse one over the number when we create a matrix with that it should undo the operation created by this scaling matrix up here now let's do rotation inverse actually uh, we learned that a rotation matrix is unique in that its inverse is also its transpose. So let's just get the, in, the regular rotation matrix that we create up here and transpose it. And that will give us the rotation inverse. Pretty easy. And now translation inverse. What is that going to be? Well, it's just going to be the negative of this translation vector. So, putting it all together, the transform inverse matrix is going to be this scaling matrix we just made times the rotation matrix we just made times the translation inverse we just made. Again, notice the order. To make the regular matrix, we do T times R times S. But here we do S times R 
times t. Now there's only one more thing left to do, and it's in some code that I've cleverly hidden right here. Oh, and it's gone, so let's just find it again. Thank you, Visual Studio. So, when we have v0 and v1 here, that is the beginning and end point of the bullet or laser, or whatever you have, what, it, what have you, that was shot. And that needs to be translated by our inverse matrix into the local space of the objects, just like we discussed in the previous video. So target1.m transform inverse. If we take our vector and multiply it through the inverse matrix, now we'll have a local space vector. And we should do this for the beginning and also the end points. And when we get an intersection point, that will be in the local space of our object. So we have to transform it back to the global space. So if we multiply it by M, the original matrix, it will transform back to the local space for us. Great. Only one thing left to do, and that's press F5 and run the game. Here are our monsters. Oh, where'd the big one go? Must have nixed that one by accident. But here we are, and when we shoot all our weird rotated objects, we can see that they all work properly, including the scaling and rotation and translation. Everything works just fine. And that should settle it. Next time, join us. Next time, we're going to do some more funky math, and we're going to have a funkalicious time. That was kind of cheesy, I think.